And oh my word, game one has left a massive benchmark to live up to. I have never in my life seen an ending to a game like that. Not just Nexus to Nexus, but Nexus to Nexus to back to Nexus. How do you reset and go back onto the stage? BLG, BLG look cal calm enough, but getting through into this draft, we'll see whether that stays the same way. Change of sides, W on the blue side this time. All right, so we can now see that we have got ourselves a very different set of bands coming on through, and um, that is going to be a very odd game for WE in particular to come off of because um, they just had hope spring from the jaws of despair all for it to be a lie anyway and to lose in one of the craziest games of all time because they had three inhibitors down, got their inhibitors back up, defended the Nexus again, got the enemy Nexus, lost anyway. They need a different look. They've gone towards Fofo on the LeBlanc. He can still carry on this. It's a different feel though, and I completely understand wanting to change things up because you need a reset after that. It's mentally well, so devastating. So the thing is for me, this isn't actually a change up for WE because there's a strong lane bully that can go into side lane play really well. So for me, actually, not too different in regards to how you play out the laning phase and the macro. Of course, it's not the Tristana and the AD carry, and it does have some differences there. But WE are very confident with that. Thing is, giving up this. Bin gets to be on a carry this time. BLG, they've typically relied on uh, Bin being on tanks for most of spring. They have, of course, over MSI and coming into summer. Have been a little bit more on the carry duty. Night after that game. But, uh -huh. you know, after that blast cone, you are on Malzahar duty. Get to it. <laughs> wow. Well, we're here. He's on Mal's duty, and rightly so. That was... A bit sussy. I feel like Elk as well might have been introduced to some verbal discipline, courtesy of the coach, after that particular auto attack on the blast cone. That was an experience. Yeah. I'm still kind of reeling from the last game. I'm, I'm sure there's more we can talk about from the draft. I mean, so BLG have a really good comp to suddenly... Um, Mal Malzahar out the LeBlanc, so kind of deny her, her mobility. Or Malzahar, anyone, and put the Rumble out on top of them. Mm -hmm. Now, the thing is, LeBlanc leaves in very high kill pressure as soon as you hit level 3. Now, if you have a gold card on top of that from Wayward, which can very much be okay into the Rumble... Well, hmm, no, it's not great into the Rumble. I think we're going to get a lane swap here from WE. But if they get this combo online, and they get a gold card onto someone, so LeBlanc and Lee Sin can zero them out, BLG need to be very, very careful. I think Knight is going to be hyper-focused in this game, and I think that's what we've seen against other Malzahars we've seen in the LPL2. We've only seen two games of it, mm -hmm. both of them into the LeBlanc, and it can be very, very powerful. BLG, what's the plan now? Okay. Kha'Zix, I don't think... Look, folks, the problem with the Kha'Zix is that that's another pick which can also just get yeeted off the map by, like, a good gold card. It can. At least this time you've got people at the Malzahar to lock down someone for the Kha'Zix, and in fairness, we will say that we saw a very good Kha'Zix from Shun yet, not Shun, um, Hacker, yesterday. We know Shun is playing it right now. Uh, and uh, they played that one pretty well. Interesting to see that Kha'Zix is rising in priority. With your double AP solo laners, nominally, I suppose, we could be seeing the return of the Malzahar, the Rumble support, even if it has been a hot minute, particularly since the Malzahar has been seen down there. But we shall see how it goes. BLG clearly feeling confident yep. despite the the interesting first game. Yeah, BLG, I have to say, of all the teams in the LPL, BLG are one of the most mentally resilient. This team can bounce back from a lot of stuff. Now, of course, that didn't help them all the time at MSI, where they felt like they kind of went down the tilt train. But this team typically has been pretty good at kind of recovering from big, big games like that. Uh, they've banned away some big follow-up champions with like the Ziggs or the Draven ult from WE. So they're looking to deny WE some of their combos. They might just take away something like the Nautilus as well, because that would be one of Mark's uh, remaining kind of best combo champions. He'd still have the Rel, or he'd still have something like the Alistair, which could potentially be powerful on that too. You'd imagine that Mark is going for big engage with a follow-up champion from LP. Okay. <clears throat> Rel is in. <clears throat> Excuse me, my voice is still slightly dead on that. There is no cough button for me. It's just <laughs> hold on and pray. The team fight relatively strong, at least in terms of pick. You lock someone down with the Malzahar on the rail and the follow-up from a Kha'Zix Rumble would be pretty nasty. There's no one tanky enough to that. LeBlanc in particular, not going to have the funnest time into that if she gets locked down. King of something like a Zeri, I can understand. Zaya, also a possibility. We'll wait and see what they decide is going to be the choice. Zeri, 
very strong at the current meta with, of course, the Static Shiv, wanting something with a little bit more self-agency. Something that just wave clears very well. Benefits from the Shiv buffs of 14.11 that we're playing on too. We did say that the Nautilus or the Rel or the Alistair were looking likely for Mark to kind of join in on the combo from WE. Something like a Nautilus is better as a pick champion. I wouldn't mind that going through. I want to see something that can follow up with the combo and pick off the first target very well. But you do have that Zeri. They were hovering over in chat. Look, it's Mark. Go for mm -hmm. engage, please. And they lock in the Alistair. Yeah. I wonder whether the Lulu Plus and Mikhail's might have been quite valuable. Look, Sam, it's Mark. Alive, it's but, Mark. Yeah. We're looking but for Mark, engage. Folks. Exactly. <laughs> We'd love to go towards those engage options. Of course, his prize, Leona, didn't come away with the win despite some very clutch late game engages, particularly on tonight. Elk debating a gin of his own. He's already got a lot of set up and pick. The Kaiser to follow up on something like the Rel or the Malzahar would also make some sense. And now we have Elk last pick does go towards the Kaiser. Now the thing is, Kaiser pretty hard to pick off and really good at following up on plays that explosively start. Also very good at getting around someone like an Alistair if they start holding the front line. So BLG, their game is probably going to be, you know, pin someone in place, get a big engage and rearrange the fight so it's not about the, the mobility from WE. It's going to be hard. I think if Knight gets ganked a lot early like we have seen from Malzahar's in the LPL so far. Only see the two games of it. The theory has been the same though. You gank Malzahar enough that LeBlanc gets such a lead. She gets a free QSS and Malzahar doesn't get to his items on time. BLG need to have a good early game. WE have actually been getting the better of them slightly in that mm. area at different points. And that will be in under the microscope again. <sighs> okay. Everyone out there, breathe deep and breathe out. We've got to reset just a touch here after <sighs> the absolute chaos, the madness, the, the the gloriousness of a bit of League of Legends at its most, um, I would say chaotic. chaotic, chaotic. <laughs> I didn't want to say that word again. Certainly most unusual. That is a rarefied scenario. That is for sure. But it is certainly high tension, high drama stuff. But everything's back to level one. One over BLG for... Whatever that means after a game like that. But WE would love, love, love to bounce back. But mentally, they have to be so resilient after losing yep. a game like that. The first time they played against BLG, it was, again, close games across the board. Felt like they were in winning positions in that one, too. Game number one, you don't get much closer than a winning position than being on the enemy nexus and being denied. But somehow BLG got away with that one, too. That's just the nature of things in the LPL. We've had one of the most alien results in game one. See how game number two matches up. Crowd roars in support. There is a particular Ari skin that's been uh, making the rounds, I think it's fair to say. And the crowd continues to cheer, especially after that game, my lord. Just look at that crowd. The level of support that these teams bring in, the faith, I suppose, and I suppose the heartbreak in some ways. I bet you there's some people out there with very sweaty palms Look, right folks, now. Folks, um, enjoy this game. Yeah. Enjoy this series. Enjoy what you're watching right now. Um, game one is a rarity. I, in my 11 years plus of watching League of Legends, have never seen a game like that. It's only group stage of LPL. That's where it's at. It's not a finals. It's not a huge game, but sometimes the gameplay makes enough of it. And when the crowd is as loud as that, you understand why even the third party, the people who are not there for a particular team, they're just there for the love of the game. They would be just as loud as everyone else because we're watching a bit of history. Um, what are we seeing in this game, though? Game two, we've got a bit of a different jungle matchup, of course. None of these AP farmers. It's about the AD skirmishers, the assassins. And they're currently clearing bot to top lane to go towards the Rumble uh, Twisted Fate matchup. I got to say, I was expecting a lane swap um, of the Twisted Fate away from the Rumble. I don't yeah. think it's a great matchup. But it's still going to be standard lanes. Keep our eyes a little bit on this. I think interesting as well, the exhausts come through for Wayward, aware that if he gets knocked uh, into a dangerous scenario where the Kha'Zix comes on up, could end up being blown up despite a gold card. You can only stun one of those two coming for your head, especially after Kha'Zix looks into something theoretically like a um, Edge of Night could make stunning him up and dealing with him a little bit trickier. Said that yesterday as well and actually didn't end up getting built by the Kha'Zix, but still an option, so you know. Also, against, that up. also against TF, he props the ult and he immediately pops the Edge of Night. Of course it does, doesn't yeah, it? So we'll see that later into the game. Yep. I always forget yep, that well, that's, It's a big thing, blows those spell shots. Kill Fofo, again, bullying the Malzahar early. You expect this. Malzahar is picked into the LeBlanc, but not for the early lane. You need 
Level 4, level 5, that's when your auto attacks clear the wave really well. Thing is, if you're stopping your auto attack the wave, you're setting yourself up for LeBlanc to do pretty nasty combos onto you. If you don't manage to get the Q on her as she hops back, it ends up being a losing trade. So Knights, I feel like he was actually the second best mid laner in the last game. And that's he was, not, yeah. I don't think that's controversial at all. I think that he's had a bit of a rough game. He just missed himself. Two of those minions, which is why the observers like to do that. Look better though. Better farming now. Good job, Knight. Very best be obnoxious. Hung steps on forwards. Remember the Karzix. For all the isolated damage is a thing, it's not actually all that strong until he's got a little bit of AD behind him. So at least him with those base yeah. abilities and just more of them can definitely win out in also, those skirmishes. And also, big thing, you just don't have mid prior. LeBlanc can flash yep. over that wall, and if that chain lands, you are a very dead bug. The bug splat will come out. Shun's going to get himself towards the bot lane because Elkanon do have themselves some... Um, priority towards that bot side of the map. We a trade of um, those crabs. Early game again. We said that this is going to be important. Need to make sure that Knight's being held back in lane. Make sure that he's not getting good value and Fofo gets himself to an early QSS. Hung is potentially going to get spotted heading towards this top side. It's not spotted uh, through that ward though. Gold card under turret. Oh, turn. there's the stun bin. Knocks low, but not down. Stays alive. Yeah. Doesn't burn any summoners. Right, they could potentially look to juggle aggro again. They have an ignite from oh. Benny. Clears the wave. Ooh, the exhaust comes on through, and that's enough to prevent the burn back from being too damaging. They get first blood. Oh, and the ignite goes under wave with not for Hung. He doesn't have the teleport. Great first gank coming in from WE's jungle up. Really important for them. They need to get themselves some victories in these solo lane matchups. LeBlanc to stay ahead of the game in top lane to make sure the Rumble doesn't get to do that Rumble laning thing, which he's so well known for on the mm. current patch. Especially when he's gone towards the Ignite choice. It was the summoner of preference for a while last year on the Rumble. It's fallen away just a little bit as the teleport and some of the item changes coming on through have meant that Rumbles have gone back towards mm. that option to get around the map a bit more, but it does mean that when you have these early dives go against you, it costs you a little bit heavier than if you did have that teleport. Which is actually interesting to me, just because they're on stream, and I'd rather talk about that now. Conqueror for the Zeri. I don't see that ring that much. Normally, it's going to be something like that. Press the attack or the fleet footwork if you think that you're going to be struggling lane a little bit more. The moving speed, obviously, very important on that um, on that rune as well. It's been shifted more towards that. But Conqueror means that in elongated fights, if LP survives the initial engage, it's a pretty decent chance those extra stats could actually really can end up coming to bear, especially with the Shiv, which build coming in from Zeri, being really good at accessing loads of enemy champions on the back of fights. Especially when you've got burst elsewhere, I guess, if you're then tasked with being clean up, that ability to play longer in those fights with a little bit more stats makes some sense to me, especially when you are into the Kaiser, you can afford to have a little less of a leaning focused room. Knight playing quite well there, actually. He's using his uh, shield there for, um, you know, to make sure he gets that E-Trade onto Fofo behind in the XP, and it does mean there is a level 6 LeBlanc with Flash ready mm. to follow up on a play like this, but Knight does have the, p the push right now. On, he has roamed off the reset to theoretically come and support this. I need a new word. There's more than just theory involved. Sonic Wave lands, resonating strike. On's roam is On's roam is crucial here. Yeah. If he isn't there, Knight can't really help that play immediately from his position. He does have Flash Alt now though, and he's a good HP, and he has the Fated Ashes. He's at a good point. Also has a spell I don't shield think up. Fofo can stand there, can he? It's yeah, he bold. can. He can for now. It's just whether Shun uh, gets himself within a E range. That's what makes mm. it awkward. But again, look where Knight's going. That Flash Alt could be critical. Here comes TF. Looking to come on in. The Silver Call of the Void and the Nether Grasp available. Silence comes on through, but not before the gold card can start flying. On yeah. stunned <laughs> up, but is quick to use yeah. a bit of so, Ferromancy and crash down to safety. The thing as well is that if you jump forward as LeBlanc at that point, the dash also gets stopped. So if you go in for the full mm. assassination, you are then isolated against the Kha'Zix and stunned up and suppressed, rather, in front of him. Still, it's not going to be BLG getting the way fully in towards this bin. Has yeah. ultimate, could again up getting an equalizer on top of Ons and yeah. They are being so careful. Everyone's coming up, but the AD carries a 4v4. Potentially on the cards, but I think WE decide, okay. having got the card shark on their team, that he knows best and say, yeah, this think, hand is no winnable one. I think this is quite a big win for BLG. You uh, stop yeah. the first um, Destiny Gate from Twisted Fate from getting big value. You also do you delay yourself in, in, in WE from impacting mid lane. You see it's even gold value. Knight has been fine in that mid lane matchup. And um, it feels like BLG now have a big shot with Knight roaming with Flash and Ult. That's going to be a big problem. Really have to expect now WE to get another big win on a solo lane Steals somewhere. It. Otherwise, they'll be in trouble. Shun being obnoxious as all hell. A 2v3 up here. Flash for the Nether Grasp. Trying to knock this one out. The Equalizer actually is still huge. Big value from the Merc Treads. Doing some work. Got a gold card. Stuns him under turret. But they've still got the R available. And Shun 
gets out from aggro. Hong has a ward hop. Q's onto it. Flash for the kick. Doesn't get the kill until now. It's a two for one. But Fofo is here. Flash for the change. Bing can't get far enough away. And BLG are sure to lose out the extended play regardless. Oh, the cow is going to just stomp Knight into the dirt as well. BLG were looking for the big roam and they Beautiful. lose all three members just for the one kill. BLG overextend in topside. And what do we say? WE strong in the early game. Pushing BLG again. Get wayward. They just about get hung. But the problem is Fofo's roaming with a lot of the HP bar remaining. And it'll make it a lot less of a clean affair. Now you've got a two kill. Lee Sin, you've got two kills on the LeBlanc. And that should scare you if you are BLG. <laughs> Yes, it should. We said that solo lane advantages for W get really important in this game. One, you can kind of get the LeBlanc getting loads of gold over the Malzahar, but also Twisted Fate needs to be ahead of the Rumble. They try and shut him down, and that's why BLG are looking forward. The flash ult from Malzahar, very valuable, and that's a big thing here too. You've just used your flash ult on Malzahar. Might even took himself the aggro because uh, the Fated Ashes were still sticking onto the Lee Sim. Does get himself a good combo there, and it's enough damage. It was, they lose the two. They lose the two. So it's three for two. I, I, I forgot to count in the one earlier because we lost two earlier. But still, WE walking out with a lot of gold for this um, for this LeBlanc. It's a really important set of kills to give over. Huge moment. And where the kills go, pretty valuable, of course. The uh, Mercury Tread values from Wayward there into double AP gank is pretty valuable when you're being no. locked up. So did get well, five to get a gold card down, honestly. Well, yes and no. Doesn't work on Malzahar ult, remember? True, but the so, magic damage is more uh, what I'm thinking. Yes, yeah, yeah. But in terms of actually getting locked down, that's one of the greatest things about Malzahar. You can have all the Merc Treads you want. Doesn't care about Tenacity. Nope. Suppression doesn't care for that. So that's another TF fault. Where's that coming in? It's going to Bin. He has no flash. They're going to flash on forwards for the gold card. Damage is good. Kicked on through. The exhaust comes down, down onto Shun. But with him right. being there, they can't get any more. Yeah, flash, exhaust, ult from Wayward. Both of these teams throwing everything at the play time after time. BLG feels like they're getting slightly the better of it on the whole, but of course mm -hmm. that last play was so big for Fofo on the LeBlanc. If he gets involved, maybe that turns around. Of course, Lee Sin with only a Coalfield and a Tunneler is not actually that scary. LP, though, certainly is with a Lightning Crash, but can't uh -huh. see in the bush. The ult runs out. Elk gets to go on forwards. Turn to turn some damage back, and the PTA comes okay, on through. So the health bar trades. Ult yeah. for ult. That's ult for ult. You can see again Zeri just trying to play oh, around, not getting again. a single target Q. Ults the wave, knowing he's in danger, but no yeah, flash yeah. on Wayward means he can't follow up for the gold card. Bin, look, this guy is really experienced. Oh, he knows no. he's in danger, but has he done enough to survive? Knows where he is. Can hop on forwards, gets a sigil of malice. Stops the recall. Stops the recall. Oh, so yes. now Wayward might be able to crash in the wave. I don't think they can... Can they stay that long? No one's coming up to help Bin. I think he's just about made it out alive. He will lose... A wave for that, and we did say again, any advantages for the solo lanes, because TF is a dangerous matchup against Rumble, and the LeBlanc needs to snowball against the Malzahar, are very, very valuable. I don't know if they've done quite enough. The gold is very even um, as, as a team, and in the solo lanes, I don't know if it's enough. I'm also looking towards that bot lane because of what happened down there. LP had to back two plates. Elk is still valuable. We've not really talked about the Kaiser, and it will be a little while before she becomes... Um, the terror of the rift, so to speak. But now I've got a Kraken Slayer. That extra gold is important. You're getting towards some of those upgrades from this point onwards as well once you start to get another item in as well. And that can be really valuable here is the follow-up to that lockdown that Knight in particular is providing. <laughs> 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 oh, he ignites him, but doesn't oh, stop the recall. No. On is no stranger to the dubstep ignite as he tries to stop him on the recall, but it's not going to stop this. Someone pulled the orcs cord. <laughs> Someone pulled the cord out. Fofo is going to be left uh, to just walk back out onto the map. He's completely... <laughs> That's got me, man. After... Look, <laughs> after, after, after everything which happened in game one, we are still having a bit of a happy fun game. <laughs> oh, on uh, does not manage to delay that one. Hop over the call of the void, but there's still malefic visions there that uh, apparently uh, give you so much nightmare six. danger. It does have six. Doesn't need to pop it. So holds his nerve. One thing which is really striking me about these games is how slowly dragons are being taken on the whole. We're not seeing loads of early dragons. Both these teams really want to early skirmish. Top esports would force people to come to objectives and, and skirmish at them. They take the grubs and the dragon and they fight you around them. Feels like both these teams, they just want to fight. They just want to just yeah. bare the knuckles. Bin, again, knows he's on the weak oh. side and this is the strong side. That's the combo. This time there's no defense and the combo works yep. out beautifully. Doesn't have the QSS yet, Bin. He knows he's on weak side. He's tried his best. He cleared out a wave. Boop. I don't think it's enough. He's tried his best. He's going to go down. And there's still Mark. The ability to tank up the turret is pretty good. They get the kill. Top laner for top laner. And that shall be the trade.
It's a little bit slower on the top side though, and it does mean that BLG can clear the spot side turret and potentially teleport under the turret on top side as well, mm. with a lot of those ultimates not being available. Knights can just teleport right back in, clear the wave, and that's going to be only two plates taken by W for the five plates. Full tower take for BLG. Spike four grubs and stuff as well. So in the end, a uh, big win for BLG. Of course, uh, ahead in gold by about 700 mm. odd, something like that. So a lead, but certainly nothing that's going to be game breaking, that's for sure. Ooh, big crack and slayer prog. That's a W on the return. Oh, the alt. Elk uses the auto attack reset on the alt to get a quick double tap. LP goes down. Beautiful moment. Hang on, Elk's now in danger. He needs to back away. He's got a supercharge, but it's not far enough to run away. Shunt here. The double pulverized. Flash tastes the fear. And down goes TF. You should have counted your cards a little more. Elk shows off the mechanics, flashes around the Alistair, and gets himself the Prey Seeker on target. All oh, the voids. It's one of the two. Elk, huge um, flexing of the muscles in the last two kills. And Shun's there, and we were worried about the Kha'Zix, but that's the kind of skirmishing he's so good at. Now, Bin getting a huge chunk onto Fofo. Flash! Flame Spitter, not quite enough. The chain is there. There should be another Electro Harpoon. Can't land it quite yet. Now, Hung is coming on over. Will not land a Sonic Wave. And Fofo forced to flash, but so is Bin. Oh my word. Skirmish scrappiness has been the name of the game here in game number two. Maybe game one just opened up some of the, uh, the extra valves on the engine. Now we've got a teleport in. The fighting doesn't stop. Fofo died under turret. Wants to get some revenge onto BLG if possible. Stop them taking this Herald for free. It's going to teleport up here. Off a of vision for now. BLG, what have they got? They don't have themselves Elk's ult. That's pretty important. They don't have Bin with a teleport either. So I guess they're just going to seed this one. Yeah, no real way to bring up the rumble. Yes, you got flash ult on Knight. But it's a little bit better in the skirmishes at this point. A bit risky to go on forwards. So it won't be popped. The gold lead now. Definitely ballooning from what was once close. It's certainly not anymore after this yeah. sequence. So the thing about Kaiser is that you're looking to get your passive, but if you use your ultimate, it resets your, it resets your auto attack timer. It uses that to get the passive in. Huge play onto LP, knowing the burst of this with the press the attack on too. Really important combo here. Uses Barry. the barrier to bait him. Knows that Mark is trying to um, block the W. Flashes around to get it on target. Great mechanics going from Elk. It's also the reason why Mark ended up canceling his auto. Wanted to make sure he could block the W. Elk was just better on the flash. Yeah, and a flash from Shun as well to get a taste of fear, and suddenly the burst is just too much. That Karzik's ahead of the curve, doing a lot better than he could have been, <laughs> and again, huge lead. I mean, Elk, honestly, I'm just in awe of this guy in the last minute or two, just pulling off the <laughs> pulling off the training weights and just going full soap saying, BLG, they have themselves significantly, kind of out of nowhere. Bin got himself a load of time on side lanes. It's two towers for none on the other side with a load of plates involved too. We haven't even really seen BLG have to play around, you no. know, the Karzix, Malzahar, big assassination combo. They've just been winning in isolated skirmishes. And because Fofo lost in the side lanes, well, actually Malzahar's caught up and overtaken him in farm, which I wasn't expecting out of the early lane. Still, it's not like WE are completely out of this game. They can blow up a lot yeah. of these members who are still very yeah. squishy this game. Yeah, I mean, Fofo just dying in bot lane that one time and losing, uh, you know, tower and a couple of waves set him so far behind the yeah. game. And now BLG, they have the, Ma the LeBlanc counter online. I think BLG, really intelligent play for them. They've never let WE get to the point... Oh, oh wait, this is an isolated wayward. wayward. Gets to press R and the Void Assault comes on through. There's an exhaust and a dream. But you just get to press Q a few more times yeah. and uh, those Reaper so, Claws reap the TF. Folks, WE have a good combo composition. How do you stop a combo composition? You don't let them have all the pieces of it. It's one of the best ways to do it. BLG have been playing across the map. Even though this team has a great team fight with the Rel, Rumble, and the big CC of the Malzahar, they've been playing really well in the isolated skirmishes. Shun's getting huge value. I think that Elk's getting huge value on, again, the AD carry assassin of the Kaiser too. Not many teams would do this and try and play the wider map, but BLG are getting big value out of this. Uh, and now I'm looking at this Karzix lead and I'm going, that's 1,600 gold ahead. That's going to be really difficult to manage. He knows what's going on. Just pans on over. Good map movement. And then just sees what's going on. It's a quick R. And he just got himself the level 11 as well. Oh. He's a level up on the top lane. Shun been doing an awesome job here. Very different champion from game one of the brand. I think that Shun, again, often one of these players, which um, is kind of un has been at points kind of overshadowed by the likes mm. of Bin or Elk when he's been in great form as well. I think that Shun, Elk, and On being such big talents, which have been grown up within BLG. Shun used to be, of course on that um, IG roster was, uh, was Rookie's Jungler. This guy has been growing up alongside the rest of the team. BLG, their homegrown trio of the bot lane and jungle um, over a couple of years together on the roster, have really done a lot of work to make this team into what it is today. 
Should now after that kill as well. Got the opportunity. Raw damage in. Who needs a spell shield? You said it was going to get popped yeah, anyway. So, so was like, well, now he just blows like, someone up like, instead. Doesn't matter. TF's going to blow the ult anyway and pop the spell shield. Why would I just not get more damage? BLG. Um, they're starting to group up a little more now. We hmm. said they were winning in the grouped up. Uh, well, rather, the split skirmishes. Can they do same if it comes into the grouped, uh, gr group fights? I feel like with the gold advantage they have, it's pretty likely. But W still have a very potent combo. And, you know, if they do get themselves to the point where it's gold card, Lee Sin, LeBlanc assassinating a target, maybe that gives room for LP on the ship power swipe to do something special. Try and make it play wayward onto the Krugs. Some work done here. Not too much more to be found as yet. Just continuing to clear out what they can. So the side lanes we go for WE. It has been dangerous for them to be in yes, side lanes. Ah, that this is some... So Shun, I think... Oh, he's done the W overall second. I was wondering what he did second there. He's got the... Um, it's... You know what? I got minute blast from the past there. There used to be a point back in Season 6 where Kha'Zix, when he went into bushes with the ult evolve, would go invisible that for free. Awful. And I was yeah. like, what? Oh, that's Ooh, an engage. Oh boy. Uh, Hung actually pulled back a little bit, but the yeah. turnaround's huge. They've gone too deep. Hung tries to go to L, but a phenomenal flash from the Kaiser keeps her alive. It does not matter, though. They still lose a member. And the Rift Herald is going to be driven towards the bot. Yeah, it's just used it as... <laughs> again, look, folks, in the LPL, in case you missed it, it's uh, just been a bit of... Oh, my God, damage. Not quite there. Right, okay. Shun's alive. I wondered if we had to peel off of that one. Um, yeah, how is a bit more of a taxi in the LPL than it is elsewhere in the world? BLG, um, oh, they do fall prey to that Herald, and now when they're being, when things are getting towards the point where they're grouping up, you can see that WE managed to get themselves a good combo with a TF ult. Um, Bin, has he oh, actually boy. channeled his recall? I don't know. He's no, there. he hasn't. Oh, Bin. I'm still here, but that means the Rel can just die again on respawn. Yeah, he's walked back towards bot lane Goodbye. and gone straight towards the death chamber. LP is going to go over the wall. TP down, Ben's gonna be here, gold card comes on in, Shun is there doing a lot of damage, Ooh. and Ol comes on down, and Rumble is dead. Nethergrass comes on in, Elk into the backline, but there's so many members! I don't know about that one, Kaiser! Change afterwards, dead, and BLG are throwing. BLG win in the split skirmishes, but not in the grouped up fight. WE use multiple gold cards to secure themselves. Mid lane, then bot lane, then a huge fight afterwards. And WE still showing that their combo that they've been drafting towards. They were so face up about it. It was all in the cards, all in the gold cards, that they could pull this off. BLG really underestimating the burst that could come out of their opposing numbers. Wow. <laughs> right, let's go to this replay. So the thing is here, right? I mean, Honor's looking to defend this, but you don't win in the grouped up fights in the same way you do in split fights. They give themselves um, loads of opportunities for big gold cards to come through. And the gold card for either a Lee Sin or a LeBlanc is absolutely huge. Knight gets an ult, which is immediately cancelled. Elk flies into five people, which is not really what you want Cream from your star proofs. AD carry. Cr that was... That was a cream of the crop play. Yeah. Oh, it's curdled a bit. Bin, now yeah. in a potentially good spot here. Could still prove to be pretty scary. Two seconds on there. The grasp is back up. The equalizer is solid, but now Bin's in danger, remember? Does still have the flash, so might be able to get on out. Doesn't need to burn it. And they'll stay alive for now. Dragon about to be set up. Four seconds until a Hextech Dragon. It'll be sole point for BLG, but I think after that one, the equalizer going down. It'll be very tricky for them. To sit in the river, Wayward trying to play for va wave control in the mid lane. That turret staying up, proving pretty tricky. On down to 10% HP. Gold card popped means that Wayward can join the play from the mid lane into the Baron pit. He goes looking for a good gold card angle. Elk over the wall, looking for the combo. What have they got? We all about that combo. Set up for assassination. Dragon down. BLG looking for the retreat. BLG lose dragon. That stops soul point. Bush, they just don't know. The vision control, the waves, all there. Back away, go BLG. On. Gets the magnet storm. The kick out, solid, but the damage is still huge. Getting to do some work. Wayward goes down, trying to get some flames. Shun. The damage, Shun, nearly there. Elk over the wall. They win this grouped up fight. And they manage to get themselves the assassination before Wayward can combo. The TF goes down and the cards are scattered. BLG were humbled a little bit in the bot side, but it's WE who get that return favor, which is going to lead into BLG getting the Baron. This will allow them to split the map again if they really want to, teleporting in to secure this to make sure that there's no problem with these low HP okay. bars. I don't think he can. I think he just immediately die. I'm not going to lie. He's not even walking over. It's a bit of a low health team going towards it, but it should be secured all the same. Mm. BLG walk away with the lion's share of the objective um, kind of like pool left on the map. Lose the dragon, get themselves that big old baron. 
I understand. Fofo had no vision. If he saw those health bars, I feel a double distort might have done some work. But instead, yeah, we're we'll going see into, this one here. Going into Fog of War. Yeah. Gold card's not really a factor. You get the aftershock, get the shield on. Fantastic engage. The um, Malzar ult away with again afterwards. There is no combo. The combo is completely dead. The gold card is so critical to this. Shun also manages to get himself a huge amount of damage. They're not even isolated. Just gets a huge W across the whole team. Knight flashes the chain proc. Shun flashes out from a last auto. They both survive. And maybe if one or other of them had died, it might have been maybe, maybe. a little bit different afterwards. But it's still going to be BLG who claimed Sam, the Baron. I think that's the least of the close calls that BLG <laughs> had to worry about today. Game <laughs> one. Need we remind about the one that was on screen this time. Was one of the most insane games I have ever seen in my life. BLG somehow haven't cracked this mid lane out of turret just yet, but I'd imagine it'll be falling. Some point soon. LP oh, has shouldn't. Infinity Edge. That's oh, important. Shouldn't. He has Spell Shield now. It's harder to hit mm. him on this one. You'd have to, again, maybe you'd have to pot that with something easier. And whoever doesn't have his ult right now. On, securing bot lane down I'm here. Let's come back! For the Nethergrass Passport, but I think you'll take the trade and jungle for AD carry right now. On, looking for the angle on in. Gets knocked out! A phenomenal headbutt. It's not going to save LP, though, and he goes down regardless. Oh, it doesn't knock him out of the full combo. Actually, it ends up dragging LP even further towards the BLG team. Mark almost saving his AD carry, but BLG... They put the rocket boosters on now. And with two down on WE, they lose themselves the mid lane oh, out of turret. Fofo goes deep, gets to go back before the Call of the Void comes on through. On is gold carded, but the damage just isn't really there right now. A two for one in the end, but I'm not sure whether BLG can get that much more from the Baron anymore. Getting the mid lane out of turret is big enough in my eyes. It allows you so much more entrance into the enemy jungle. Bin is going to spot Mark on the other side. Going to mm -hmm. stop him from recalling. Knight doesn't have his ult. Don't think there's any realistic follow up here, but all the same, BLG. <laughs> They have had to work a little harder in the group up parts. So we have uh, really tried it. <laughs> no here comes what? the TF ult. They can traditionally get over here. They're going to get Hex Gates through, but Bin gets to go away. Oh, just nope. too slow. Uh, the Hex Gates are uh, a gift from Piltover, which send BLG on their way. TF ult being used for not very much. They need to hold on to that so dearly. Really important to get that one. What happens here? Elk walks up too close. Honestly, really good reactions. Knight almost stops... Um, from doing this, we've got ourselves another fight, folks. I think. It's never over 24 kills in 24 and a half uh, minutes. LP's dead. One. LP is dead. Wait, what? When did that happen? It's the one got a hold of it. Just murdered him in the mid lane off screen. Elk assassinating again. That might just be the go button for BLG. No AD carry available for WE. Kaiser pushing in Should mid lane. Gets onto Hung, does a lot of damage. Way we're trying to be a threat in this bush. Gets some damage onto Shun, but the equalizer afterwards makes Mark feel pretty sad. Throws out a Skarner remote, but I'm not sure you're that particular threatening. That tanky scorpion, way more of a danger, it feels like, in the meta right now. Knight uh, gets another. BLG are just fighting better than WE right now. Mark doesn't get the combo, gets shut down. When all that happens, Elk takes another very personal AD carry 1v1 to assassinate the Zeri. LP has been, has been outclassed by Elk and the whole in this series. I'm sure we'll get a replay of this. It's a full wave. He just walks up to a level up. Red buff Kaiser. Has himself a flash, has himself an ult. You can skate over that wall all you want. Kaiser follows. That's partly why you sometimes see a little bit of Kaiser into Zeri. You can't skate far enough away out of the R if you just wait a second or two. Well. And, um, folks, need we remind people from the first series of the day, LGD, yes, they had themselves some really scuffed edges. If WB lose this 0-2, it actually puts LGD in a great position to even oh, yeah. up the score with them. If That means that all eyes go on to WB versus LGD later into that group to see who's going to come through a second seed from Group B. Does have a lot of stakes to it. We're so focused on the gameplay of Rahira now. Because we have to be. Because it's been so crazy from both of these teams. But there are stakes beyond this too. WE, they are well and truly behind the pace of this game. They are behind in almost every role, but top lane somehow for Wayward. Wayward, that gold card, can that be enough? It's hard to believe it. It's sort of a terminus now for a little bit of extra tankiness. I'm not sure what he goes for here. Something to try and help keep him alive perhaps. But either way, not going to be that point. As LP's jumped on again. He can't get far enough away. There's a gold card afterwards. Just to both stays alive for a second. But the gold card, a fraction late, should, should die. Makes it a one for one of the jungler being dead. Isn't going to lead to that much because it's still a little while before another dragon yeah. or baron spawns. Elk missing that W means that the, it, it just becomes a 1v1 at the end. And Wayward does have enough gold to take down that kill. BLG, they still take the AD carry off the table. LP has really been taken to school. Oh, Bin, though, might also be having some yeah, class. That's a lot of damage. He's just gone. And it is Lee Sin LeBlanc. It is very much a kill combo, despite the fact that Everyone's they're 5,000 gold behind compared to their opposite numbers. And they're also down another person compared to the three people walking up here. Uh, you can see Fofo's going to escape on the other side, but unfortunately Hung, with 50 seconds on the Baron spawning, about to be picked off. 
might lead to a good setup for that for BLG. Yeah, W are just behind on the map on the whole. They do get Bin, and they put him down into the dirt again. Uh, Bin has very much been on the weak side in this game. But BLG, on the whole, every time a fight comes through, they're just eking out slight extra advantages most of the time. Elk is ungodly fed. Mm. Has an Infinity Edge, has the Flicker Blades, which means that every time he auto-attacks, his Q and his E, the next round of Queen Cool is going to come through that quicker. And I, I just don't think LP can ever stand alone in the lane now. Level 16 from Elk. The follow-up range from Kaiser's ult goes up so much with each level as well. At this point, if On flies into you in the same half of the map, Elk's following up real quick after that point. And On has Flash right now, so let's watch to see whether BLG can find themselves a big skirmish engage. Trying their damnedest, that is for certain. WE... I'm trying to get some damage on the wall, stun onto Fofo, but the other will Oh, the flash! Nether grasp! Fofo falls! Oh, and Fofo, he got the better of Knight in game one, and Knight says, all right, no ego here. You pick the LeBlanc, it's Malzahar DD, and he's actually performed it incredibly well. BLG, that will be the pick which gets them the Baron. It melts, and WE, they're trying to smite it over <laughs> the fucking X gates, but don't get it. I appreciate the attempt. A flyby does not lead to much but a scenic view of the death of the Baron Hung. Now he's trying to escape to throw down the Dragon's Rage, but I don't think this dragon is going to be doing all that much versus a Mecha Karzix. That's a B-side horror movie I'd watch. <laughs> yeah, that is. It came from the jungle. Elk walking down as well. Maybe they overchase for this one, but they don't care. They would rather get this all the same. He's trying his very best. <laughs> W up again shortly. Nah, he's got the mark on him now. Uh, I think that out. Oh, yeah. 100 takes this. It, look, Hunk could have flashed, could have survived through to another cooldown, but honestly, all it does is waste your flash and mm. your life. With the jungler dead, doesn't mean that W are going to spend a full 40 seconds without him on the table, with Baron buff being able to um, allow BLG to push in so effectively. I think BLG have realistically just skirmished their way through to a game two victory. It's been fairly comfortable from them with a little bit of craziness thrown in. Yeah, it's been a one or two turnarounds. I think once they started getting... Um, good plays after the initial mess in that bot lane around the tier one with Bin. All started going their way properly on hit with an off shock laser, but Zeri at two items just isn't hitting that hard, unfortunately, right now. LP really struggling this game. Elk has just been taking his head off all the time. And he has an LP so far down an XP, if nothing else. Um, he is very much struggling to get involved with this. We've also got the poke from a very fed Kha'Zix. Shun, level 17, four levels up. Over the Lee Sim. Over Hung is opposite number and is a whole bunch of items. We do have Mark currently on a flank, but he's been spotted out by the guys W. Elk could always fly through to follow that up. You've got to be careful with that now. Elk can assassinate anyone isolated on the entire map. We hold on for now, but with one inhibitor down, he's back away. Hung flashes out this time around, stays alive. The chain slam forces a flash in return from on. Shun on the flank. Again, he can just keep playing with it. Evolve W. He's got himself the Evolve Wings as well. So much mobility. The jump range increased. BLG, they can play this as long and slow as they want. They have the W from both the Kai's Sir. That's a good him. engage. That's a massive engage. Nice stays alive. The turnaround with the equalizer of the Magnus Storm is solid, but it's still going to be two dead. What about the extended fight? They do get one back. Shun leaps over the wall. The damage is just so high, though. Elk, Elk into the backline. Gets one. He's away. He's just better. Rename him to Lion. I've never seen a more predatory herbivore in my life. Death by Antlers. Elk has assassinated WE again and again. Game one was historic. It was back and forth. Game two was just a victory lap. WE for 0-2 to the reigning champions of the LPL. It was high drama. It was high tension. My heart rate will not settle for at least an hour, I feel. But BLG 2-0. But you were here, everyone. You know <laughs> that score is a lie. <laughs> yeah, game one. Honestly, both series in W and BLG, you walk away feeling at least one of those games BLG should have won 100% lost, but they walk away. Clean record against Team WE. Somehow, some way, this team has uh, had a lot to live up to from spring. MSI, again, sort of humbled them. They were still the second best team in the world and uh, in summer so far. They've been pushed by their regional opponents. We'll have to see how they do at the very top of the LPL. They'll be going through into Group A, I think pretty much assuming, or assuredly, from this one. We'll see no, how they stack up against think, no. uh, the other top teams in the LPL. Well, I don't really know how to follow that up. I think the scenes that we have witnessed over the last...